rules. Money rules. Money. Welcome to the Money Rules Podcast, where we tackle your personal financial matters with leading financial advisors. Your host, we do Melon Zorko. We all know the checklist when it comes to evaluating a potential life partner. Personality, intelligence, values, and more. But today we're going to discuss a crucial piece that often gets overlooked, a partner's financial stability and spending mindset. So, why is it that we hesitate to bring up financial matters with our significant others? Well, social norms and fears of being seen as shallow or materialistic can play a role. But here's the reality. Financial compatibility is a significant factor in relationship success. According to studies, it's one of the leading causes of divorce. Joining us on this episode to discuss the key financial aspects that couples should explore before tying the knot is Chrisley Borda, who is a wealth advisor at PSG Wealth. Welcome, Chrisley. Hi, Timmy. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Chris Lee, long-term financial goals a fundamental aspect of compatibility. Can you tell us why it's so important for couples to align in this area? Absolutely, to me, aligning on long-term financial goals is crucial because it's a reflection of shared values and life aspirations. And, I mean, it's standing and, and saying your vows and saying the I do's. One of the phrases that we always say is for richer or for poorer. So this compatibility creates a harmonious atmosphere, allowing couples to work as a team towards mutual aspirations. So whether that's buying a home, traveling, investing, saving, it's important to align those goals. And it will also reduce conflict, foster cooperation, and ensure a smoother journey throughout the financial aspects of a life together. Could you also explain to us what the debt-to-income ratio is and why it matters and how it can impact a couple's financial well-being? Sure. So the debt-to-income ratio is a reflection of an individual's financial health, showing how much of the income is spent on debt repayment. And for couples, a high combined debt-to-income ratio could limit their ability to secure loans or mortgages, Um, affecting their lifestyle and future goals. So understanding and aligning on this ratio ratio is crucial for managing debts effectively and also planning for the futures cohesively. We know that credit scores are often considered a measure of one's financial responsibility. How does a low credit score affect not just individual financial prospects but also a couple's joint ventures? So... Credit scores do indeed reflect financial responsibility. It's one of the most important things that often gets looked at um, when applying for loans or debts or anything like that. So a low score can severely impact individual and joint abilities, um, you know, to secure the loans, mortgages, or even for favorable interest rates. So for couples with a joint low credit score, this could mean higher lending costs and restricted financial options potentially straining the relationship as well. So it's important to have open and honest discussions about the credit scores and a collective effort to help improve them from both sides so that it can safeguard the financial and emotional well-being of the relationship. Now, budgeting is an important part of managing your financial um, affairs. When it comes to it, how does a mismatch in spending habits and financial priorities affect the dynamics of a relationship? Mismatched spending habits and financial priorities can lead to tensions, disagreements, and can be a source of ongoing conflict. This we see a lot, um, you know, in the industry that we are in, and especially when it comes to money and a mismatched in terms of spending and saving habits. So such differences might translate to varied lifestyle expectations, savings goals, and investment strategies. Divergent financial values and goals can also lead to a lot of stress and resentment in a relationship, and it can impact the overall dynamics. So I would suggest having open, non-judgmental conversations about financial habits, about financial goals, about savings, and creating a unified, mutually agreeable budget between the two of you are a key aspect to managing these differences and fostering financial harmony in the relationship. Just staying on that, what are some of the key discussions that couples should have in terms of financial responsibilities and expectations? 
I think it's important to me for couples to create their own joint financial plan, you know, in this partnership or in this relationship. Um, And this plan should be focused around income, expenses, savings and investments. And they should define each individual and shared financial responsibilities. Um, They should agree on financial contributions towards the household and discuss financial goals, individual goals, as well as family and household goals, and how each partner will contribute um, towards this specific goal. It's also very important, I think, to clarify the distribution of expenses. For instance, if there's a notable income disparity, will expenses be divided according to the earning or will it be split equally? And I think establishing each partner's monetary contribution to the shared living space before marrying or moving in together can prevent a lot of unexpected and unnecessary financial challenges. When it comes to financially assisting children, there can be a lot of differing opinions. How can older couples navigate this aspect to ensure a balanced approach? So to me, I um, became a mom recently and obviously having a, having a child, there is a lot of different financial aspects that needs to be taken into account, especially in, in, a, in a, you know, a marriage or a, 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 a relationship environment. And I think navigating the financial assistance for children requires mutual agreement between both partners to ensure balance and harmony, not only in the house, but also obviously in the finances. So my advice would be that couples can consider various options. Um, And some of the options are, you know, establishing trust funds or savings accounts specifically for the children's needs, maybe setting up educational plans, uh, agreeing on like a fixed monthly allowance or savings that you put away, determining proportional contributions based on the income disparity, who's going to pay for this, who's going to pay for that, setting clear financial boundaries. Um, Also, you know, investing in life insurance policies for children's securities, maintaining a family budget, including of children's expenses. And also, I think the older they get, involving the children um, in these types of financial discussions to instill a responsibility with them going forward as well. Um, Establishing these measures through constant communication and shared values can foster a supportive and balanced financial environment, I think, and for the children, um, while maintaining the financial stability and the harmony of the couple. Chris Lee, the topic of supporting extended family is also worth um, exploring. How can couples find common ground and prevent unexpected surprises? Yeah, I think um, it can indeed bring a lot of unexpected surprises if you're not prepared or aware of, of anything like that happening. So, I think you need to have a plan in place. And it brings me back to what I just mentioned earlier. Have a plan in place, a personal financial plan for your relationship. Um, Transparent communication about something like this, about supporting extended family members, about the expectations, about the boundaries that you are going to set. Um, It's very crucial. So couples should discuss and agree on the extent and limits of the support to provide And also ensure that responsibilities are divided in such a way that everyone is happy with that. Now, some people might be a bit nervous to have this conversation with their partner. Could you maybe provide our listeners with some practical advice on how to approach these conversations? And maybe would including a financial advisor in this um, help them out? Yes, of course. To me, I think... I will approach this exactly the way I would approach clients. So in a relationship, I would approach this with my partner exactly how I would approach it as an advisor to my client. So um, it, it should require honesty, openness, and a non-judgmental attitude. I think that's the most important part. And then it's also, I think, if you base this conversation on the six-step financial plan or the six-step financial planning process, it can actually guide you towards having this conversation and also creating a financial plan for your, um, you know, in your relationship. So first and foremost, establish and define the relationship with one another. So next step will be gather the information. So know what you want to talk about, all the points that we've discussed, put that on the list and go through every one of them that can have a financial impact. Next will be analyze and evaluate 
the financial status of both partners' financial statements, commitments, um, the strengths, the weaknesses, all that type of stuff. Then I would say develop a plan that will work for you. Go through that plan. And then the most important part of that is monitor that regularly. Go back to that plan. See if it's still on board with your goals, with your needs. If life changes, if income changes, then you should change your plan as well. But I think if you have something that you can actually work from, it will just create a lot of harmony um, for the couple. Chris, Lina, when you've had these discussions um, and went through all these questions, could that also help couples determine the right marital contract for them? Absolutely, to me. Uh, discussing these financial aspects can certainly aid couples in determining the appropriate marital contract, whether that's community of property, outside of community of property, or with accrual. It will help in understanding individ- individual and combined assets and liabilities and how they wish to structure their financial arrangements in marriage. Are there any other aspects that we haven't covered that couples should discuss before tying the knot? Uh, To me, I think beyond the discussed aspects, couples should also just consider discussing their retirement plans, insurance needs, estate planning. And I think a very important one is risk tolerances. Grasping each other's stance on financial matters from savings and investments to their comfort with financial risk is crucial. So if you have a disparity in risk tolerances, with one leading towards high risks and the other being more conservative, it's beneficial for the couple to find a middle ground. Um, Understanding each other's attitude towards savings, money, investments can provide a full picture of financial compatibility and it will allow the couple to build a stronger, more harmonious future together. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode, Chris Lee. Thank you, Timmy. It's my pleasure. That was Chris Lee Boerter, who is a wealth advisor at PSG Wealth. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Money Rules Podcast. To listen to more, go to moneyweb.co.za or the MoneyWeb app and follow MoneyWeb News for daily updates. Money Rules. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.